Okay, so statistics unit five, we're looking at the introduction to the normal distributions and the standard normal distribution. So looking at the first section, um, we're gonna do a little bit of review. So in chapter four, we discussed discrete and continuous random variables along with discrete probability distributions. So now we're gonna be looking at continuous probability distributions. And that most important aspect is the normal distribution. So the normal distribution is a continuous probability distribution for a random variable x. The graph of a normal distribution is called the normal curve. Okay. And then we have five properties. So the first one is that the mean, median, and mode are equal. Okay. Next we have that the normal curve is bell-shaped. and symmetric or about the mean. Okay, the total area under the curve is one which is going to allow us to be able to find the probability. Because remember our probability ranges from zero to one. Um, our fourth property is the normal curve approaches, but never touches. the x-axis as it extends farther away from the mean. And then our fifth property deals more with our graph of the normal distribution. Um, and here, key things is that between mu minus sigma and mu plus, oops, how about mu, plus sigma, the graph curves downward. And then the graph curves upwards. To the left of mu minus sigma and to the right of mu plus sigma, okay? And those points where it changes direction on the curve are called inflection points, okay? All right, so this is a picture of the normal distribution. Um, notice the means in the center, it's bell-shaped, and then the total area under the curve is one. 
Um, so a normal distribution can have any mean and any positive standard deviation. These two parameters, mu and sigma, completely determine the shape of the normal distribution. The mean gives the location of the line of symmetry and the standard deviation describes how much the data are spread out. So we have two different examples here, an A and a B. We're talking about that line of symmetry and the curve and how spread out for the standard deviation. Um, so I want you to try these and then we'll talk about them tomorrow in class. So there are infinitely many normal distributions, each with its own mean and standard deviation, but we have one very important one, and that is the standard normal distribution. Okay. So the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with a mean of zero. and a standard deviation of one. Okay. So here's a picture. We have zero as our mean in the center, and then we go out by one as our standard deviation. Um, the reason why we switch to the standard normal distribution is because it allows us to compare different data sets. So think back when we were looking at z-scores and comparing um, two different sets of data, we can find the z-score of both of the data values to compare which one is greater. Okay. So if you notice, the horizontal scale of the graph of the standard normal distribution uses z instead of x. Okay. And then recall, transforming an x value to a z-score, we can use the formula z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. And we always want to round to the nearest hundredth or two decimal places. Okay. So when a data value of a normally distributed random variable X is transformed into a Z-score, the result will be the standard normal distribution. When this transformation takes place, they are that falls in the interval under the nor non-standard normal curve is the same as that under the standard normal curve with the corresponding Z boundary. So what that's saying is the area between those data entries, whether you're looking at the normal distribution or the standard normal distribution are the same, which is what allows us to find that area. So in chapter two, we talked about the empirical rule between negative three and three standard deviations away from the mean. So now we're able to calculate the area for any X value other than negative three to three standard deviations. So after you use the formula to find the Z-score, you can use a standard normal table in Appendix B to find the cumulative area under the standard normal curve. So a couple of properties we want to go over first with that probability is that first one, the cumulative area is close to zero. For z scores close to z equals negative 3.49. Okay, so that far left, anything to the left of that would be zero. The cumulative area increases as the z-scores increase. The cumulative area of z equals zero is 0 0.5000, zero, zero, zero. Okay, because remember, Z equals zero is when it's the mean, and that represents the midpoint of our normal curve. And then the cumulative area is close to one for Z scores 
close to z equals a positive 3.49 or anything greater than 9.